Good evening and welcome to the Flix Daily News. This is March 23rd, 2012. Today we are covering the money bomb that is on today. A new campaign ad that was just released. Brent Stafford joins us to reveal some video that was recorded secretly uh, regarding the Missouri caucus. This is going to be interesting. Uh, and also, the Ron Paul campaign has released a new economics lecture. They've been doing this over the last several months, releasing these lectures, these educational lectures, every so often, and we're going to get to one of those. Um, but first, the money bomb. The money bomb is on right now. Uh, it's gone up a little bit since I took the screenshot an hour or so ago. Here's the donate button in case you can't see it. Please get along there now. Donate whatever you can. If you can and you haven't maxed out seriously max out we really need the money to be coming in for the campaign we need to continue the delegate fight we need to get our people to temper ah this guy just annoys me but you see he's holding up an etch -a sketch so the campaign today released this new ad that uh called etch -a sketch that fathi's holding up there uh, i think it's an internet only release i'm not sure but let's take a look at this See if you like it. Now, some have really highly criticized this. I've never seen any Ron Paul ad get as much criticism, but uh, I liked it. I guess you need a little bit of the context, and uh, I'll explain that. Let me explain that first. Ron Romney's chief of staff was doing a television interview, and he talked about the Ron Romney campaign being able to change just like a etch -a sketch <laughs> another expensive etch -a sketch you like my new artwork on there I'll tell you more about that in another show uh, how you can get an etch -a sketch and shake it out and so it erases it and you can start again and he was talking about the Romney campaign being just like that and so the news picked up uh, this and ran with it and it, it's become the, you know, the meme of the hour uh, as you will see and then Ron Paul responds to all of this ridiculousness uh, with some points at the end. Let's take a look. It's almost like an Etch-a-Sketch. You can shake it up and we start all over again. This is an Etch-a-Sketch. An Etch-a-Sketch. How many of you ever used an Etch-a-Sketch? How's your etching and sketching? You shake it up like an Etch-a-Sketch. Shake like an Etch-a-Sketch. Where's my Etch-a-Sketch at? Do you have an Etch-a-Sketch? We're talking about big things here, folks. So what do you think? I kind of liked it. If you understand the context, and I think they should have probably explained that a little bit better right in the beginning. But now on to the top story of today's show. Brian Spencer, he's a man that I'll allow Brett Stafford to introduce, was caught on uh, video secretly. Let's go now to the interview I just did with Brent Stafford, who will explain what we are about to look at. Brent, thanks for joining us on the show once again. Um, you're coming to us tonight because of this video that has been released today that we're about to play in just a second. But tell us what we're about to see and who is the person that's featured in this video, Brian Spencer? Well, uh, Brian Spencer was the uh, chairman of the St. Charles County Republican Committee's subcommittee for the caucus. So he was the chairman of that caucus subcommittee. He was involved in the, in the uh, caucus on Saturday. If anyone watches all of the, the videos uh, for Saturday, he's the one that actually comes on um, and basically introduces uh, Eugene Dokes and turns things over to Eugene. But he's the one that kind of read the, the, what are being called the house rules. And, uh, uh, so, and he was one of the main organizers for the caucus. He was basically in charge of organizing the caucus. All right, and so what are we about to see here on this video? Well, what you're going to see is uh, him talking to a group um, of people uh, at a pachyderms meeting, which is a Republican club, and uh, he's basically uh, telling them, uh, giving them a recap of uh, what happened over the weekend with the caucus. And there was about 40 minutes or so that he talked, but the, uh, the, 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 the parts uh, where he was really talking about how they had planned um, to not allow Ron Paul supporters to win all of the delegates is, is the gist of uh, what's in the video that was put up on YouTube today. All right. Well, let's just take a look at this video now, and we'll come back to you right after this. Take a look at this. In our many months of planning, we had a few goals, and we, uh, 
we looked at the state rules, we looked at the national rules, I looked at Iowa, I looked at Maine, I looked at Nebraska and saw how they did it. And we tried to come up with a set of rules that were going to best represent the entire county voice. We didn't want to make it an all or nothing place. We wanted it to be proportional so that however many people came to the caucus representing a certain candidate, they would get that many of the delegates. Um, unfortunately, Eugene Gross has taken the brunt of the, the hate mail. But what he knew ahead of time, we need to be rallying behind Eugene Gross because one, he was trying to protect our right to vote our voice, Paul media thing that is going on, that is trying to crucify, and the media is joining in to crucify Eugene Dove. We need to rally out there because he was trying to protect the rights of people voting. Because if the Ron Paul would have been taken, taken over, taken over the meeting, if you were anybody but a Ron Paul supporter, you would have had no voice. Okay. You would have had no voice. We, the special committee designed it so that everyone would have a voice. Sure did. But what we need to do is we need to rally behind Eugene Dozen and mm -hmm. publicly. Now, I can't do that because the state has asked me to keep quiet mm -hmm. for a while. Plus, my campaign says you need to lose, uh, since you're running for state rep, you need to lay low and let other people carry the carry the flags, but I, I really want to stand up for my friend who is trying to do the right thing. I also want to defend my own integrity and character. Four years ago, we had maybe 115, 130 people. We had at least 10 times that. Yeah. The, the, the thing that I, I, I have a hard time reconciling is the prohibition of electronic monitoring with the press who was there who was doing the same thing. Well, here's the thing. I personally didn't want any media there because it's a closed meeting and, you know, the caucus has a history of being the sausage grinder of the politics and we don't want uh, people to see what actually goes into the sausage. Um, is taking it hard. I mean, it's every story that hangs in it. Every story. Because he, because he was not going to allow Ron Paul to shut out the vote of three other candidates. He was protected by the vote. He was protecting your right to have your voice heard. And he is being crucified. We cannot stand quiet. We have to call the papers. We have to call the, the radio places. We have to get online and do Facebook because he's being crucified. He is being publicly crucified for fighting for us. So he needs to have someone to stand behind him. And I, unfortunately, can only do it in small places like that. I cannot do that publicly because, one, I'm the event organizer and my credibility would be questioned because they think that we are in a conspiracy together. And two, um, I'm running for state rep and they don't want me to say anything, even though I feel I have to. So please protect, stand behind you, he knows he deserves it, he was, he was fighting for Well, Brent, that was some pretty incriminating stuff right there. What's, what are the implications of what we just saw? Well, it's confirmation of what a lot of people had already suspected and and some people had, you know, basically known but, you know, didn't have actual concrete evidence of and as that the caucus uh, organizers uh, had basically come up with a plan to uh, to make the caucus go their way. And, uh, and you know, so things like uh, ignoring my points of order, ignoring uh, uh, my nomination uh, to the chair, uh, you know, all falls in line with, with this. So basically, they made a decision, uh, this, either the subcommittee or, or actually, Brian implies the entire central committee. I don't, I'm not certain of that. Uh, I'm not, but at any rate, uh, they decided that they knew what was best, that they wanted all three candidates to have delegates, uh, and they were going to, because they thought that was fair, and they were going to cheat 
to make sure that it was a fair outcome. They were cheating to be fair. Oh. Um, has the campaign seen this? Has they made any comment on this yet? Oh yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. Uh, the campaign saw it before. It was released uh, on, on uh, YouTube and they saw the original unedited 40-minute uh, version. Uh, uh, so they're well aware of it. Um, the, the, the premeditation uh, was obvious and, and now is uh, being uh, substantiated by the person who, who was in charge of organizing and running the caucus. Uh, you know, a lot of us knew that was their plan. Uh, we we went in knowing the rules, uh, took and played by the rules to to you know uh, not allow that to happen. But it was obvious that they they were not going to listen to any uh, motions or points of order, any kind of parliamentary procedure. That they that's why that they uh, you know that Eugene uh, started appointing uh, these committees of caucus. Uh, that was not his uh, role. Uh, to kind of ramrod through a lot of these things, and uh, they just, they had an agenda, and they were not going to swerve from it, and uh, it's my understanding that there was a meeting um, uh, on yesterday, today's Friday, on Thursday uh, morning, uh, with the uh, state GOP, and I think the state GOP told them, you know, in certain terms, that what they did was not proper, so I, I wasn't a party to that meeting, but uh, uh, that's kind of, that's kind of some things I've, I've heard. That's interesting. So where do the Ron Paul people, including you, go from here? Is there any legal or criminal action that's being uh, talked about, proposed? Uh, and also, what about a new caucus? Well, obviously there's lots of talk about a lot of things. Uh, as far as what the uh, official uh, campaign is going to do, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not necessarily. I'm a grassroots uh, organizer. I'm not uh, with the official campaign, and even if I was, I wouldn't uh, pretend to speak for the campaign on, on that regard. Um, you know, as far as the new caucus, uh, there will be a new caucus. It's going to be April 10th at 7 p.m., which is a Tuesday night instead of a Saturday morning, which is a little bit unusual. But but because of the time frame is needed to get this, uh, in, you know, done and resolved, it's going to end up being on a weeknight. And uh, you know, my intention would be to uh, attempt to be the permanent chair, uh, just as I did at the, uh, the caucus, uh, the first, you know, the caucus on March 17th. So, um, that's you know where things are headed. The state is actually the state party is going to actually uh, organize and and run the, uh, the the caucus up until the point of the election of the chair. But the uh, St. Charles County Central Committee will not be involved in any way. Uh, their credibility is completely gone, especially in light of this new video that came out today. Um, there would be no way anybody could trust anything they're doing. And, uh, and, it, and it's not just the Ron Paul uh, you know, supporters um, that are involved with this, it's the other candidates too. No one can trust anything that that type of committee is doing right now. Right. He also spoke about running as a state representative. We cannot let that happen. Is there anything we can do to prevent that from happening? Well, yeah, uh, actually, um, the three uh, main parties in the, uh, uh, the caucus on Saturday that people will see on the, on the videos of the caucus is uh, Brian Spencer, the, the organizer, uh, Eugene Dokes, who's the, county, the chair of the GOP in the county, and then uh, Matt Ellen, who uh, uh, was the guy that uh, Eugene tried to appoint as chair. All three of those uh, men are running for uh, for, off for office, and uh, I guess the best thing to do is, you know, file against them. Um, none of them are in my district, and frankly, I've got other commitments, and I really wouldn't be uh, in a position to run for the state house. But but basically, we need to, you know, those people if they're willing to do that at a caucus, you know, what are they going to do in the legislature? You know. So I think there's uh, definitely some desire to uh, have people run against them in, uh, uh, in their uh, house races. Right, yeah. Well, Brent, we appreciate you for all that you have already done and for even your willingness to go back to the caucus and run to be the permanent chair of that caucus. Um, so you know, uh, maybe uh, we will find some people in that caucus that are prepared to run. It sounds like everything's going to get a little bit more organized there. Yeah. And one thing also uh, is the <laughs> there will be cameras allowed at this new caucus, 
there will be uh, vast amounts of media at the caucus. So I think the chances for shenanigans are going to be um, very low. All eyes are going to be on our caucus, to, uh, and uh, you know, there should be no issues at all because of because of that. And and I think the state uh, party is very very interested in having a fair and clean caucus uh, with all of this attention that's on it. So uh, I'm, I'm you know we've got to get our we've got to get our front call people to show up. If, they, if we have wrong call people that were not at our last caucus, they have to come. Everyone's fired up over this. I expect all the can, all the candidates to try to turn out bigger numbers than they did the, the first time around. And uh, if we want to win the day, uh, we've got to turn our people out. So if you're watching this and you're in St. Charles County or you know somebody is, get them to the caucus. Don't go alone. Bring people with you. Absolutely. Brent, thanks so much for coming on uh, the Flick Show again. Appreciate your report. I'm sure we'll be talking to you once more. I hope so. So an interesting little interview there. And uh, cameras are becoming ubiquitous. You can't hide from them anymore. So you can't stand up in a meeting and speak the truth and not expect somebody to be recording it. I don't think you're going to be running as a state rep, Brian. Good luck with that. On to the next part. Uh, the campaign today released this uh, economics lecture, and it's really good. It's uh, by James Grant called What Does the Fed Do? And it's just over an hour long, so uh, let's watch that now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're not going to watch it now, but it is on the Ron Paul Flick site, and you can find it under the educational category. And Talking about that, I get a lot of emails from people asking if I would do all of this incredibly hard work to put everything into categories on the Ron Paul Flix website. I've gone ahead and done that for you. Actually, it's been done since the very first day we launched. Every single video we've ever posted has been listed by category. You can find that category. Um, or the category listing on the right hand side down a little bit in the page and you'll see there's a video categories and a drop down. You can drop down here and you can scroll down a huge list where all of the videos have been character, uh, categorized. So it's all there. Please take advantage of that. And that is our show for today. Uh, please follow us on Twitter at Ron Paul Flix. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Ron Paul Flix. Remember, as everybody says when they're doing these videos and I have never done, subscribe, favorite, thumbs up and comment because it does help us spread the word. If you want to support us, ronpaulflix.com slash partner. And don't forget, today is the money bomb. So right now, head along to ronpaul2012.com and click the donate button and give whatever you can. See you on Monday.